Welcome. My name is Dimitri, and today I want to talk about UPSs and changing batteries. So uh, the first part of this video is going to be changing the battery for this UPS. So this is a APC Backups RS550 with a little LSD, LCD display. Um, so this is a, actually a really, really simple and quick battery change. So um, UPSs protect your computer from power fluctuations and they have a battery inside them. And the battery will need to be replaced every two to four years, depending on the quality of the battery. Batteries also have a little marking on here. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but up here, they use alphabet for months and numbers for years. So this one here is MJ06E. So I'm guessing that's the 16th, uh, 2016. I'm hoping it's not 2006. And E might be for May. I wouldn't believe these batteries are brand new, but um, so if you have a look here, this is a Panasonic battery. So instead of getting like a generic branded battery, I thought I'd try and get something that hopefully will last four years. So this UPS is, now this UPS I think is about five or six years old. Um, so it's had a really, really good lifespan with the battery. So it's still got the original battery. Um, so it's simply just a matter of sliding that out and then there's always a little tag here to pull the battery out. And you just pull the battery out. You got a couple little tags in here. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. wiggle. Always go there just to check the polarity. So you got red, and that should match the positive. Okay, so I'll just put this aside. Um, so this is a few things extra that I recommend you do that you don't have to do, but um, I've done this quite a number of times and I've found it to be the most uh, safe and secure way to make sure that the battery swap does not cause any problems later on. First thing, little a um, uh, little guard here that just helps to prevent any cross connections of the battery. Flat blade screwdriver. It's got some double-sided tape. Just gently lever it off. And I'm gonna see if I can keep the tape on there, but that's not gonna happen. Oh no, it did happen. And so what I do is I'll just sit it there like that, grab the other battery and keep it side by side, red to red, positive to positive, double check, triple check. And then I'll just slide it under here and stick it down. Hey presto. Um, another good thing to do is keep them symmetrical the same, is this has like a little sticker that helps pull it out. So we're gonna try and see if we can pull this out. And we're gonna stick it over here. But it's not gonna stick down too well. So I might just go get a little bit of tape just to hold it on there. Give me one second. Okay, so I've just got a little bit of uh, clear, this is like a duct tape or a gaffer tape. I think it's duct tape transparent duct tape. So being transparent is a bonus, but it's just what I had lying around. And so the whole purpose of this is to, just to make sure that when it comes time to pull this battery out in a few years down the track that it pulls out um, and just so people might want to know, this is the brand of battery that APC used. Um, CS3, made in Vietnam, a CSB battery, Vietnam, Vietnam company. So it's just a rebranded battery from somewhere else, which the Panasonic probably is as well. Okay, so the next critical part of putting this back together 
is any type of pliers. And what we want to do is that we want to just crimp this connector just ever so slightly. So I'm just going to give it a little crimp. So I just saw it crimp a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other. And this one here is a little bit trickier to crimp. But luckily these pliers are perfect for it. So I'm just going to crimp it, crimp it. <clears throat> so by crimping the little connection here, you ensure that when you reconnect the battery, it's a firm and solid connection. Um, you know, when you move it, the connection stays. What I've found in the past is that a loose connection, uh, as odd as it may sound, causes problems. And I've come across that a number of times. So always, whenever I change batteries, I would crimp these connectors every time. It just ensures that uh, for me, the customer doesn't come back with issues or something like that. And so I learned that lesson. And so what you'll need to do is slide the battery in a little bit first. And I'll just bring this around. And then you connect one. So it's going to be hard to push in. So if you have to, you can just use the pliers to make sure it's all the way. And this one push it in, make sure it's firm, make sure it's firm, push it in, push it in, double check, triple check. Red to positive, black to negative. And now we're gonna slide it in, turn it upside down, push it in and just do this. So in theory, when I press this button on, it should turn on. There should be some battery charge in there. Yep, so at the front, it's saying the battery is almost charged and there's a hundred minutes of runtime. And so it's always a good idea once you change a battery is to plug it in and just let it charge up for preferably a day but you don't have to to be honest it's not that big a deal you can plug it in and start using it um, and then turn the computer on and then pull the power out of the wall force it to use the battery and just make sure it runs for like you know five to 15 minutes depending on the load that you have connected to this now, just a quick uh, review on this UPS. This UPS is a really, really nice UPS. APC make good quality UPSs. You can't go wrong with something like this. Uh, I work in computers, and I purchased this um, for my own computer, um, but I found that it could only handle one computer, <clears throat> like one high-end computer. But you can plug two low-end computers to this very easily. Um, you don't have to connect the monitors. The only issue with these UPSs is they have these ICC connectors. Absolute pain in the you-know-what. So you need to get the right cables to go with it. But this thing is a little magic little connector with the IEC male there and a female one of these. I strongly recommend that you get one of these when you buy one of these. It's the most critical part of connecting stuff. So you can easily just plug this in, plug a power board into here, and there you have multiple normal connections plugged into UPS. I never bothered with the master control on this. I just want it purely just for power protection. Um, so yeah, highly recommend this unit. And we're gonna continue on, I'll turn this off. So we're going to continue on with the UPS that I use. Okay, so this is the more complicated um, setup for UPS. So this here is a, a Powerware 5115-1500VA UPS. So this is a true UPS in that the... Power that you use from it 
comes from the batteries. Um, whereas the other UPS, the APC one, basically it just conditions, it's basically a bit like a surge board. Um, it's a bit better than the surge board. And it flicks over to battery when there's no power. With these, you're constantly running from battery. Um, and so you've always got a clean, solid power coming from it. And no matter what comes into this, you should have clean power always coming to your computer. Um, so working with computers for a very, very long time, I always run UPSs. So this is the one that I got. Um, I happened to pick this up and uh, reconditioned it and uh, use it for myself. So uh, let's begin doing this. So the first thing I want to do is... I got some double-sided tape, I have some tools, I have some stuff. Because the first thing I want to do is recreate the battery connections and the, the setup that was in there. Um, so when you take it out, I take photos um, so that I ensure that when I reconnect it all up, the connections are identical. It should be pretty straightforward, but... It's always a good idea to take photos before you disconnect things so you can see how they were reconnected back up. Because you've got this little wire here, that's the only thing, that connects from one side to the other side somehow. I'll check my camera in a second. So first off, let's recreate this. So I grabbed the two new batteries. Again, I got some Panasonic batteries. And I'll put some links down below for some of this stuff. Um, in Australia, these cost 44 Australian dollars, which might equate to $30 US or something like that. All right, so the first thing I want to do is recreate this. So I double check, negative, positive, negative, positive. And so I'm going to recreate this one first. So the first thing I want to do is remove this tape that helps me to pull it out. And what I might do again is just grab a little extra tape. So next time I have to pull this out, and I do hope there's a next time, because I hope I can keep using this uh, UPS. So we have the tape taken off here, this off here, connections are the same, connections are the same. So what I need to do is I need to remove this off of here. So it's just a little plastic guard just to help protect the terminal from just being touched by anything. Uh, I've lost the double sided tape, which is perfectly fine because I have some more double sided tape to go on there. But instead of double sided tape, I'll have something else. I've got a hot glue gun here, so I'm just going to put a little dab of hot glue. On there, and I'm just going to stick it over just like that. Um, hot glue guns very, very good. You actually find that this has got stuff hot glued together. So I hot glued these batteries together. All right, so I've recreated that side. Now I want to recreate this side. All right, so I've got positive, negative, positive, negative. So I need to remove this, which this has been hot glued on, which will make it more difficult to remove. I'm just trying to remove it. All right, so I'll we'll just try and clean it up a little bit. It wasn't that hard to remove. I 
we'll just put another little dab of hot glue on there. And we are going to put that over the red, just like that. <clears throat> and so what we're doing is we're recreating how they were connected and set up. Oh, the next thing to do is put it on top of the old ones. So we got red to red, black to black, we're taking those off, got the tape on. Red to red, so the, the red one's being protected, negative's okay. So what we're gonna do is we are going to squeeze a little bit of hot glue. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing it on top of the batteries because it's a nice solid surface and keep them nice together. All right, hot glue's done. Give it a minute just to set up. Okay, so that's the majority of the work done. So again, what we want to do is crimp the connectors. Always crimp the connectors. Just use a pair of pliers and just squash them down a little bit. You don't want to squash them down too much. You don't want to make it too hard for yourself to put them back on. But you just want to make sure that there's a nice firm connection. So you get these ones over here. Just crimp these ones. Just want to do it nice and gently, one side at a time if you want. You can visually see when you crimp these that they just go down a little bit. All right, we are ready to rock and roll. All right, I'm back. So, the way I had it connected before was uh, wrong. And um, so I've just pulled it out, rewired it, so the long one goes to the back. The short red one went to the front. So I should have checked my uh, pictures that I took. That's why it's so important to take pictures. So um, I've uh, rearranged the cabling, always double check, triple check. And hopefully this will close now. Okay, and then I assume this will turn on. So now it's just going through a little bit of a self-check, checking the LEDs. And now it's uh, got a little LED telling me it's running on battery, so it's working. And so we should be able to turn that off. Oops. There we go. Um, so that's me servicing uh, my UPSs. Um, for me, I always like to have UPSs just in case anything happens, storms, power fluctuations, power going down, things like that. Um, hope you kind of enjoyed it. Um, if you've got any questions, ask and hopefully someone else can help you. And if I see the question, I will try and help you. Check down below for links for some of this stuff.